numbers, well, we're looking at what we can learn from national models. We're looking at the Canadian model, we're looking at the French model, the European model, the US model, and four models from the uh, non-Western world. Now, you might ask, why are we looking at the Canadian model? Well, Canada has been seen as, as a model. I noticed that myself when I was Canada's ambassador to the OECD. And the answer is, start with, big, start with a big business and put a bunch of Canadian managers in it, and before you know it, you have a successful small business. I mean, if you look at the 90s, uh, Canada got out of its uh, problem during a period of unprecedented growth where it basically debased the currency and screwed the unemployed for 10 years. Mind you, it did take some bureaucratic doing to get a hold of government approach, and I suppose that's what they're going to pound each other on the back about. But, and if you have to do it, it's as good a way as any. Uh, we have a banking system that's lionized for its, for its uh, ability to uh, avoid risky behavior at a time when it's very unfashionable to lend money to anybody, especially people who can pay it back. Uh, like governments, but uh, frankly, they stalled the country and stalled the country in terms of any effective growth for income in the middle classes. Uh, got us pushed out of any uh, medium to high tech economic activity and turned the place, or are in the process of turning the place into a gas station for North America. Now, I don't really see how this is anything more than a nasty family secret. I don't really know why you want to. You must have a different model in mind than mine. Well, I think you just learned yourself as a, a role as a speaker of the conference. We did, and you articulate these oh, I, I think you're absolutely right, Kevin. We need the iconoclasts of the world. We, we have him, and we probably have Beryl, too. Who can, yeah. uh, oh, my God, God. My brother, my brother <laughs> Beryl. <laughs> but, so, uh, guys, speaking as a, as a former ambassador to Canada, I have to defend the country. So basically, oh, so do I. But uh, that's what well, I, I, I would too. say. Uh, people say, why Canada? Well, why did you bother with Canada? Well, I think the deficit management, the deficit reduction, is whether it was a fluke or whether it was planned, is something to look into uh, and something to uh, exorcise one way or the other. Uh, the banking system, uh, again, was it a fluke? Could have been a fluke, but uh, we have to look at that. The uh, dealing with multiculturalism, uh, the way we do it, uh, has to be uh, compared with the way the French do it, with the way the Germans have rejected doing it because they rejected multiculturalism, with the way the US is doing it. So I think there's some lessons there. Not all uh, positive, some of them negative. And I think I would uh, tend to agree with uh, Mark's position uh, that uh, we're much weaker than we, we should be in terms of innovation and therefore we can learn there. Uh, at the geopolitical level, Canada has made considerable contributions, considerable, from uh, Pearson to uh, the G20 to uh, uh, the um, responsibility to protect. So there's a lot to learn. And one of the most pleasant surprises I had when I was ambassador to the OECD is that people saw the country in a much better light than Canadians see themselves which is true in many other countries too. But I think there's an objective reality there, and it's worth looking into. But you have your, you have your invitation to come and uh, play the devil's advocate, if you want to. Okay, Gimon, thank you very much. Um...